Hey everyone, this is Jay's Painting in the Air Sky Art Studios, and today I want to talk about building and stretching your own canvases. Now the first question we want to answer is, should you? Um, first of all, you're going to need some equipment, so that is a thing. Um, does, it doesn't have to be expensive equipment, and there's not a lot of it, but you'll need something. We've got to cut some things up and uh, stick some things together. So we'll go over those things in a bit, but uh, we also got to think about can a giant manufacturing company do something more efficiently than you can? And the answer is, of course they can. Um, for three quarter inch thick uh, stretch canvases, probably doesn't make much sense um, to make your own unless you're doing something odd size or uh, something starting to get into the larger sizes. Um, for uh, a 1.5 inch thick canvas, it starts to make some sense. Um, anything over about 36 inches uh, starts to run in the 70 to $100 range and can go up from there depending on how big you're gonna go. Custom sizes or um, thicknesses larger than 1.5, I like to use a 3 inch for some of my larger pieces, uh, then it definitely makes sense to make your own because you're not going to either find it or it's going to be prohibitively expensive. So definitely if you're looking for something like that, then you're going to have to make your own most likely. Let's do a comparison of a pre-made canvas uh, to one we can build ourselves. So from my uh, local art store that I buy things from, I can get a 36 by 48 inch canvas that's one and a half inches thick for $96. That's all in, uh, it's ready to paint on, no problem. Pretty good deal, but if you're doing a lot of them or uh, you need something larger, then you know we talked about it starts to make sense to make your own. But if you've got the tools and you've got the time, uh, a breakdown of that particular canvas to build yourself. Well, let's start out with what you build a frame out of. I use um, kiln dried fir. Um, you absolutely do not want to use something like pine or spruce because that will bend. It will also bleed sap through the canvas. Um, it'll warp, it'll, it's very bad to use. So you can't use those kinds of things. Even if it says kiln dried, it's not going to be good. But the fur is going to be really stable and uh, it's not going to bleed through or do anything like that. It's a little bit hard to work with if you don't have sharp tools, but um, it is definitely something that you would want to use. There are other uh, woods uh, av available that would work, but that's the thing that I can buy easily at my local home improvement center. And a one inch by two inch by eight foot piece of kiln dried fur at my local hardware store, home improvement store, is $10. So pretty reasonable. Now you note I said one by two, and we're looking at an inch and a half. Well, the dressed size of a one by two is actually three quarter inch by 1.5 inches thick. So that's just the, the weirdness of the lumber industry, but uh, we're gonna have a 1.5 inch thick uh, frame if we buy a one by two. Now for our canvas, I buy the canvas in a roll, uh, 60 inches by 18 feet long. It's prime canvas and it's about $110 or works out to about $1.20 a square foot. Now prime canvas versus unprimed, I would not recommend buying unprimed canvas. Um, gesso's expensive, it's an extra step and the unprimed canvas is virtually the same price as prime canvas. So unless there's a specific reason, uh, I would just buy the prime stuff. I can't see any point in buying unprimed for most, certainly my, what I do. So for our 36 by 48 inch canvas, we need two uh, one by two by eights, which is a total of 20 bucks. And we need 12 square feet of canvas totaling $14.40. Now note, um, the canvas and wood price is gonna cost a little bit more because we need bracing depending on the size. And um, the canvas, we need extra canvas to wrap around the edges, but it'll work good enough for what we're doing here today. So a total of about $35. And remember, we're comparing that to our $96 uh, 
for our pre-made. So it's basically a third. Um, so definitely, if you've got the time and the tools, uh, it's a good, good thing to be able to do, especially if you're looking at custom sizes or large pieces. So let's build one. So let's talk about choosing your wood. Um, like I said, this is a inch, one by two uh, fur. It's eight feet long. You want to have a when you're in the store. You want to have a look down the, the length of it. Um, make sure it's nice and straight in both dimensions. Uh, you don't want to start out with a a, a uh, warped piece of wood. That's just going to be a nightmare. Also, make sure there's no cracks or splits at the edges. Um, knots, if they're not too bad. Um, then you know you can do that, but uh, make sure you've got a nice, clean piece of wood. So let's talk about the equipment we need. Um, this is what I use. This is a, an old uh, Makita chop saw. It's probably 35 years old. Uh, there's nothing special about it for sure. Uh, I did just put a new blade in it recently, but other than that, um, all you want from a saw is for doing this is we want to make sure you, you can put it on 45 degree angle, get it on a straight angle here, and that we can cut uh, a nice clean cut. Uh, you can probably find something like this on uh, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever for 40 to $50 maybe. Um, it's old but it still works just fine. Now I also use a table saw. Um, so you can sort of get away without having a table saw, but I find it um, it's makes, makes for a better canvas if we can use the table saw. I'll show you how we're going to use it. This one, I think, was $180, $200, something like that. So they're not that expensive. If you build a lot of canvases like I do, um, you know, it, it pays for itself pretty quickly. And the last thing that will make your life tremendously easier are a brad nailer and an air stapler. They're both air powered. These are also available uh, battery powered um, and plug in as well. Um, I think both of these are around $50, $60, something like that. Um, you can buy at sort of your knockoff uh, hardware store both of these kinds of tools for a reasonable price. The brad nailer takes. Um, these uh, long staples, these are I think two inches long and uh, maybe inch and three quarters and that's what we're going to use to build the frame itself and then we're going to use the stapler to uh, stretch the canvas and affix the canvas to the wood frame that we built. You can use a hand stapler and you can nail with finishing nails by hand and a hammer but this is so much easier. Uh, you do need an air compressor. It does not have to be a big fancy air compressor. It just needs to be able to create a little bit of air so these things work. Um, you can probably pick up an air compressor that will do this for about 120 bucks. When we're done here, we've got a slight flat spot here. It's not an absolute sharp edge, so you can see. So we don't want that too sharp, but we do not want it to be flat because that'll show up through 
the canvas. If, we, if it was to be on here, the canvas would show a ridge right here from the outside of the canvas to the inside of the canvas. So we want to make sure we've got a very thin but not razor sharp edge right along here to support the canvas. The canvas will come up and go across this way. And then we're going to take this mitered edge here and we're going to make our 36 inches from there. We'll mark that there and do the same thing. We'll do the same thing for this one. We'll mark our 48 inch ones from, again, from the mitered side. Of course, we left the extra bit of space at the end, so we have this room for the miters. And we turn around the miter saw, so we've got the opposite angle because you can do it upside down, but it just makes it easier if you... Uh... We can see our mark right here. And that's where we start our cut. One thing I like to do is put them back to back and see if they match up. And this doesn't, so we're going to trim a little bit more off of this other piece here. It's For me, anyways, I, it's not super critical that it's exactly 36 inches or 48 inches, but they do have to be exactly the same size. And there we go. Both ends fit nicely. Now we just do the same thing for the 48 inch. Make sure you don't have any little bits of wood or dust on the saw bed so it doesn't affect your angle. And we're good. Both ends. Next thing we're going to do is cut our corner braces and we're going to cut these on the flat side rather than this way. We want to have the same 45 degree angle. Um, I'm not going to measure these, I'm just going to make them about five or six inches long and I'll just, I'm going to use this mark on the, uh, the bed of the miter saw to approximate. And the last thing we're going to do is uh, kind of cut a brace for the center of the um, longest edge. Anything over about uh, 36 inches should have a, uh, a brace in the middle to prevent it bowing in uh, on the vertical. So this is 48 inches, so we're going to put it right at um, 24 inches. I'm going to make, cut this a little bit oversized, and then I'm going to fit it properly once we get the canvas uh, outer frame put together. But this will be approximately 36 inches. It'll be, I'll cut it about 36 and a quarter just to make sure it'll fit in and we can have it nice and tight. And there we go. Except for tidying up, we're done with the chops off for today. And uh, now it's time to put it together. Okay, it's time for assembly. So we're going to need some wood glue, and we're going to need our nail gun, or our brad nailer, whatever you want to call it. 
Spread out our pieces. Now, just a note, if, if you have a dull saw blade or you get some splintering along any of these cuts, uh, you might want to take some sandpaper to that. I have new saw blades in both of my saws, so they're pretty good. I don't need them right now, don't need to sand them right now, so that's fine. So we're going to roughly lay this out into our frame shape, and we'll just start. We'll want to get some glue, get some glue on the corner. Stick them together, grab a square just to make sure we're pretty close. One of the issues is if you don't have a really good saw, you're gonna, your angles are going to be a little bit out, but they just tend to work out. And, and then all we're going to do is just rotate it. You may end up having to do this on a floor because uh, you don't have the space or a table big enough. I am really happy, fortunate to have this very large table that I can do this without bending. My old bones appreciate it. Just keep turning and gluing. And then one more. Here we can do a final check for squareness, get some glue in, and there we go. So next what we want to do is put in our cross piece. And I cut this oversize on purpose, so what we're going to do is just measure here. I'm going to measure to the inside here because this could be bowed out a little bit or bowed in. And if we measure it there, the bow is going to be there. So what we want to do is measure it from here and make sure that that is that way. When we put this in here, this width and this width is going to be exactly the same. Okay, that's trimmed up. Now we're going to mark the center of this. So we're right at 48 inches here. So 24 is dead center. And then three quarters of an inch is halfway of one and a half. So that's where we want to be. Now, we don't want to put this so it's sitting right on the back. We want to raise it up just a little bit. So I'm just going to use a little spacer here to keep that off so it's more in the center of this rather than right at the very back. It probably doesn't matter that much, but I like the look of it. Now we're going to glue the end of this, line that up in the center, press it in, and get our and we'll just spin this around, do the same thing over here. Mark the center, mark the center, and then 
should just lift this up a little bit to glue it. You know, I put this on the width rather than up and down because again, we don't want this intruding into the canvas. Now we can put in our corner pieces. Just give them a good glue. And use our spacer once again. Get that in there. Double check that our corners are square. They should be pretty good. And they're dead on. So that's good. And we just continue. Spin and glue and nail. And, and just a note, if you have any of the brats poking through, um, sometimes happens, just trim those off. You don't want them showing up and you can uh, just knock those down so they're not really visible but you don't want someone gouging themselves and it just looks more professional. So that's it. Um, we are now ready to apply the canvas. Now something really important we need to do before we start stretching our canvas. Uh, there's bits of glue, wet glue, that have come out from uh, the corners and the joints. We really need to make sure that we get all of that up with a damp cloth because if you get wet glue on your canvas, on the front of your canvas, it's going to seal up that bit of canvas and it will be really hard to paint on and it'll be really hard to keep it uh, similar and finish to the rest of the painting. So you really want to make sure you don't get any glue on the front of your canvas. Now, I've got a piece, this is my last piece of canvas off the roll, so it's a little bigger than I need, but uh, we'll talk about how big you should cut it. So here we've got, on this side, we've got our uh, gessoed side, and this is our unprimed side. So what we want to do is put it gesso side down. We're going to brush this off. We get our frame, and we'll put it up, put it uh, beveled edge down, which so that's the way it should be. Now, this is actually not too far outside what you want your edges to be. You need, you want to have lots, a fair amount of canvas so you can get a good pull as you go. I am going to trim it because we don't need quite this much, but you should probably have for an inch and a half. Um, uh, thick canvas. Uh, you probably should have about four inches of um, canvas all around. So I'm just going to quickly mark this out. Four inches. That looks about a little over four inches there. I'll just guess. It's not that s super critical. four inches over here and then I'm just gonna eyeball it you can use a knife or a pair of scissors scissors work pretty well
Okay, and that's that. So that's about properly sized canvas for stretching. Now, what we want to do is get rid of these things. And we're going to swap our brad nailer for our stapler. We're going to use these 3 8 inch staples. should always uh, have the air unplugged when you're filling up staples because things are pointing at your face. Depending on your air compressor, uh, if you're using one, um, I turn the, the uh, pressure down for this compared to the brad nailer. If it's, it's the same um, pressure as the brad nailer, the staples tend to go right through the canvas. So, so we're going to mark it in the center with a staple. We're going to flip it 180 degrees and we're going to use our thumb and our fingers to pull tight and staple that. So we're basically going right across from each other to get our first bit. And then we're going to do a 90 degree turn and pull again with our fingers and our thumb. I used my fingers on the underside of the frame here and used my thumb to press down, staple, and then spin it one more. And again, right in the middle, pull tight, and staple. So now we've got our basic here. Now you can, like I said, you can use a manual stapler. It's just a lot more difficult. Uh, this is really easy to pull the trigger and it's a little easier on your wrists and, and things like that. So uh, we're going to start on the long side here and we're just going to work our way around by pulling, stapling about every two inches apart to get about six inches and then go in the other direction. Two inches apart, six inches and then 180 degrees, two inches apart, six inches, just keep pulling. Now you can use canvas stretching pliers, uh, depends on the strength of your hands. I don't use them, well sometimes I do if I'm using a really large canvas and I need a lot of leverage, but um, these, this works pretty well. So again, 90 degrees. Two inches and six inches. And then you just work your way around. Now as we get closer to the edge, we want to stop around six or eight inches before the edge, but the corner. Okay, now we're going to do a corner here. And what we want to do in a corner, first of all, we want to decide which orientation this is going to be. Is it going to be a portrait, so tall, or landscape narrow. I think this piece, um, I don't have a specific piece for this, but I think we'll do this, uh, we're going to do a portrait because I haven't done one of those, a big portrait piece for a while. So what we want to do is we want the fold of, we want the, the up and down uh, side to be seam free. So we want to have a nice flat finish all the way along here. So we're going to do the fold by coming along here and going right to here, right to the edge with the staples. And then we can take our scissors and cut just so we're there. And then we're going to take this, this side here now watch here, we're going to fold this down and fold this 
over. So we've got a pretty much of a 45 degree angle from this piece that's coming up there. So we can tack that down there. And then we can take our scissors, cut that up there, fold that under like that, pressing that tight. And we want to make the seam pretty close to the corner, but not right exactly on it. You see how we got like that and like that. So then once we've got that in that position, we can tack it there. We can go back and do our final stretch. And that is a nice corner. Then we just repeat for all of the others. nice flat corners on all of the long sides and then all we need to do is just, just trim things up I use scissors because uh, I have occasionally cut through the front of the canvas with a knife so scissors are a little little safer you don't want to do that at this point. Okay, and so that's basically your canvas. A little dirty from my table, but that's okay. We're gonna paint over that. But there's one more step. This is a pretty nice tight canvas, but there's a trick that I use, and I'll be right back and show you what it is. Okay, so time for the magic trick. So this is our current tautness of canvas, which is fine, but it's not great. So my magic trick is this. A kettle of water, boiling water, and we're gonna pour it all over the back of this, being very careful, we don't wanna burn ourselves. What this is gonna do is gonna make our canvas a little bit like a drum head, and it's gonna shrink as it cools down and dries and so we're gonna tilt this up and get a little bit of water in between the stretcher bar and the edge and that should help bring out any wrinkles in the edge there if we have any do that all the way around do it like here and we're gonna spin this around so it's not pointing at me And then we are going to dump it out. And drain it out. Having studio floors is great. And then we're just gonna let it sit. But listen to this already. It's already hotter and it hasn't even begun to dry yet. So there you go. That's the little trick that I do to make sure I get a really nice tight canvas. And that's the whole procedure. Is it worth it? That's up to you to decide. For me, it is. I, uh, I enjoy the process of making the canvas. It becomes part of my creative process. I start to be thinking about things I could be putting on this particular thing. And uh, so it's, it, I do enjoy it a lot. Um, uh, you do have to have uh, some skill 
you do have to have some equipment. Although you don't have to have all the equipment I had here today. Uh, it is certainly possible to do it all by hand. Uh, certainly uh, uh, stretcher frames were made long before tools, air tools and electric tools were, were invented. So you can certainly do it all by hand if you uh, have that kind of energy. And in, in fact, that might even be part of a different creative process. I like would rather get to the painting of it, but uh, the meditation of building something entirely by hand to paint on later would be something that might be interesting to people. The other thing, of course, is you're going to save a bit of money. Uh, whether that's worth it or whether your time's more worth it, so, again, that's personal choice. I, I enjoy doing it, so it, it, it's uh, saving the money is a, a, a benefit or bonus for me. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, um, share. Uh, you could uh, comment if you've got some uh, ideas for future videos that I could do. Um, give it a like if you liked it, and uh, cer certainly share it with your artist friends. Until next time, it's Jay's Painting in the Earth Sky Art Studios.